Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, when we make these declarations, please believe it in your heart. Now, you're talking to a God that hears you. And because he hears you, he will answer you. I was talking to you yesterday about the mercy of God. And somehow we got touched on different things. And I remember ending explaining to you the character of God. Now, you know, all month we've been talking about the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is also dealing with the character, understanding the character of God, understanding what God does. And that's how we got into that statement of what God cannot do does not exist. Okay. Now, I said that statement is 100% correct in all ramifications. 100% correct. It talks about the ability of God. Now, of course, in usage, even for the, the, the people who use that phrase, the usage, we all know what they mean. There's no doubt about what they mean. It's, it's, it's the same thing as saying with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's as simple as that. Except you want to say, um, uh, Gabriel, the angel that spoke that to Mary, was wrong. Jesus also say, for with God, all things are possible. With God, all things, all things, all things mean all things. Don't come and tell me all things mean um, um, despite. All things is all things. For with God, all things are possible. The reason you feel God cannot do some things is because you don't know him. Trust me, it's because you don't know him. When you know him, you will come to the point where you begin to understand righteousness in, in, in what it is. Yes. You begin to understand because you will see his actions. Now, if you don't believe they are his actions, you know, funny enough, people just take stand without any foundation. They just twist and twist and twist and arrive at where, where they want to. Something that is as simple as that. You want to twist and arrive at whatever destination. No, that's not how we interpret the scriptures. The scriptures are clear. And when people begin to tell you all those um, theological jargons. You already know they want to confuse you. This thing is as simple as it is. It's a story. Yes, because theology is based on the teachings of the Bible, okay? Now, the Bible is a storybook that has lots of stories in it. And all these stories reveal one thing, the character and personality of God. Because what, what the, the thing about the Bible is all the stories have to do with men's relationship with God. If you've heard me define the Bible before, I will, you will hear me say the Bible is a is a um, is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the Word of God, what they did with it, and how they are they turned out in life. Now that's the my definition. Of course, the Holy Ghost gave me that definition. And you know, when I say this thing, I'm giving you my testimony. I'm not forcing it on you. I'm giving you my testimony. If you heard the same sound, okay, then you will understand what I'm talking about. But if you've not heard the same sound, not from me, from the Lord himself, if you've heard a different sound, then bring it, let's look at it together. It's not for us to say, mine is better, yours is best. I'm telling you my testimony, okay? John spoke this word. He said, anyone who... God sent, speaks God's words, okay? If God has sent you, speak his word. You don't speak your mind. You don't speak what you think. You speak your mind. And if you're speaking your mind, you should be bold enough to say, this is what the Lord has said to me. Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. So what I tell you, I'm telling you without any fear, Many years ago, I used to pray that prayer. And thank God, God has helped me over the years. I said, Lord, please, I don't want to come. I don't want to teach something that, because God told me, he's called me to the ministry of, of, of teaching. He's, he told me that, you know. And I said, I don't want to teach something that I'll come back years later and 
correct. It was a prayer I prayed personally to the Lord. I said, Lord, if this is what you've called me to do, then help me walk in the truth. So I don't want to come and say something today and tomorrow I'll have to come and be looking for how to correct it. There are ministers who have said, oh, I wrote this book so so yeah, I withdraw the book. I was reading a book I wrote in 2007, published in 2008. I read that book and, and, and I said, there's nothing to add here. There's nothing to subtract here. There's a lot to add. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot to add. But then what I was saying is, I don't need to do an update. More like take this book in, rewrite some. No, it's 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 good as it is. I'm working on others, okay, that will bring more understanding. But as it is, it's good to go. Still, how many years later? Praise God. Yeah, because that's the truth. You don't change the truth. Truth is what it is. And if you have received the truth, so I was telling you how I used to pray that prayer. I said, Lord, don't ever walk, allow me walk in a lie. If there's, if there's something you're revealing to me and you've not revealed it completely, don't let me get a perspective that is wrong concerning it. And over the years, the Lord has helped me. So I tell people, I said, what I'm teaching you, even if you don't understand it now, keep it in your heart. Maybe years later, months later, weeks later, You will come to understand it. Why? Because I give you what the Holy Spirit is giving. So when I say the Bible, this is a definition of the Bible the Holy Spirit has given to me. Even if you don't agree with it today, just keep it somewhere. I said the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the Word of God, what they did with it and what the outcome of their life became as a result of it. The word of God they received. That's the definition of the Bible. So it's a storybook that contains a lot of stories of people who had dealings with God. Okay. Now all these dealings, when you study them one after the other, they give you a perspective of God. Now you have to put all these perspectives together and then you begin to understand. But for you to have that understanding, there is one other personality of the Godhead that needs to be involved. And that is the Holy Spirit. He is the one Jesus said will guide you. I love that word, guide. He didn't say will tell you. He said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And I'll warn you, as one who's experienced in this, if you lack patience, you can't approach the Holy Spirit for guidance. You will make blunders even though he is in your life. Why? Because you will run with a lot of assumptions, even though he's the one. There are times the Holy Spirit will even tell you something and he just told you 10% of it. And you don't want to wait for the other part. You just want to run with what he has told you. And then you finish preaching, he'll call you back and say, but that's not what I meant. But that's what you said to me. (laughs) Praise God. Yeah. Because you read about a man called Balaam. Balaam was a prophet of God. And and Balak wanted to hire Balaam to go curse Israel. And Balaam went before the Lord and the Lord says, don't go. Okay. Sorry, sirs. The Lord have said I should not go with you. And these men went and reported to Balak. He said he will not go. He said, "Ah, maybe you guys didn't know how to come. Let me send some more senior officers to go talk to him. And he sent higher officers with money. And they went to him and said, sir, look, you need to. Now, eventually, Balaam went before the Lord and God says, go. Now, look at the phrasing of the words God spoke to him. He says, go, but only speak what I give you to say. Oh, now anyone hearing that will assume God had given him the permission to go. So Balaam was going in the name of the Lord. But guess what? He would have gotten his head cut off by another agent of God. Did you get that now? So God sending Balaam to go. And Balaam was going. And then an, an angel of God stood on the way with his sword drawn and was going to cut off the head of Balaam. If not for the donkey that restrained him. And of course, you understand, even the donkey restraining, it's not like the donkey was restraining him. It was an angel also that was restraining the donkey. Praise God. 
Yes. So you look at that whole story now. Now you want to start wondering. Okay, hold on. Why would God tell Balaam to go? And then the angel will want to oppose the one God has sent. So now you begin to understand the operations of angel. I think I, I, I've shared this uh, a few weeks ago. I can't remember if it's on this broadcast or in a meeting I was teaching. And I said, the, the, the concept of the Prince of Pesha we read in the book of Daniel, who restrained the angel that was bringing uh, for 21 days, the angel that was bringing answers to Daniel. You know, people, oh, every Prince of Pesha. The Prince of Pesha was not an evil prince. The Prince of Pesha was an angel of God. See, now, you will not understand this because your understanding is not solid yet. Now, if you already have the concept of evil spirits, demons, principalities, and powers, you know, there are different levels of principality. So there's the, there's the principality, there are powers, then there are rulers of the darkness of this world. You know, then there is spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? Now, you have that mentality already. So you read this story and, and, and the angels say, look, I, I was released, but the prince of Persia withstood me until Michael came and discharged me. So like, hey! And now I can run a message by that and say, oh, Everything that is blocking your message, I command it to, you know, and 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 then you say that that prince of passion must have been a very powerful evil, evil spirit or evil prince. Now, this is an angel that was reporting this to Daniel, okay? And he didn't tell you if the prince of Pesha was good or evil. He just said, But the prince of Pesha held me and withstood me 21 days. Now, the truth is, the prince of Pesha was not an evil spirit. He was not an evil principality. He was an angel simply doing his job. Because now you want to ask yourself, so which demon has authority or power to withstand an angel of God for 21 days. And that, and now we came up with all kinds of concepts many years ago. You know, when I say we came up, I don't mean me. We had all, all these things. And then we used to joke about it. Say, see, that angel must have been a very, very weak angel, that common one prince, or so just 21 days held him hostage. We joked about it. But you see, the truth is this the war between the prince of Persia and that angel was an uh, what do you call it now? Administrative war. It was an administrative war. Now, the prince of Pesha, hi, now, man. See, there are things only the Holy Spirit can teach you. Like Jesus said, he will guide you into all truth. So what I tell you is the truth. <laughs> I laugh because, like I said, those things were not given to me personally because um, um, I was looking for what to teach. You know, I was trying to understand for myself. Now, of course, based on your understanding, when the Lord now instructs you to teach, you'll be able to teach with a clearer understanding and bring forth his truth properly. So that's why as a teacher, you personally, I, there are preachers who don't even believe what they preach. Yes, they only sermonize and they are done. When they finish sermonizing, they are done. But they themselves, they don't believe what they, what they just finished preaching. They don't believe it. But not everybody is like that. Some of us put our lives on this thing that we preach. We live it. We preach it because we know it is true. Okay? So, the, the war that took place was simply an administrative war. And funny enough, I think I was sharing, I can't remember if it's on this broadcast now. If it's on it, yes, you're hearing it again. Now, the Prince of Persia was afraid that this angel was what they call it in diplomatic community, exponential, something like that. This angel was carrying an information that may affect his authority. That was the whole issue of the Prince of Persia. Why? Now, because Daniel was not 
Daniel was within his domain, even though Daniel was not a citizen of Persia. You know what I mean by that? Israel was under captivity. Daniel was of Israel. Okay? And Israel had their own angel that guides them, their own prince. And his name is Michael. So Michael is the prince of Israel. Now, Israel was sent into captivity into the, the kingdom of Pesha, first Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Pesha was reigning, okay? Now, before that captivity would even take place, Michael has to be withdrawn as being their prince, okay? Because even if Michael was there, I, I'm saying, I'm, I'm bringing this up for uh, to show you something. There is no way Michael would be there stationed and Israel would go into captivity. It's impossible. Now, even if God says Israel will go into captivity, Michael will not let that happen as long as he's on duty. So, for God to do that, the first thing God will have to do was to withdraw, or God had to do, was to withdraw Michael. So, Michael was called, more like called to base. You understand what I'm saying? Now, he was withdrawn first. Now, that was the only way Israel could go into captivity. Now, Israel was in captivity under another reign of kings. You know what I mean by that? Then you have the prince of Pesha who was now the one ruling. He was the angel that was ruling over that region. Every citizen of Pesha was under his control. Now, but then you have a man within that domain, Daniel by name, who had dealings with heaven directly. And he was not a citizen of Pesha. So Daniel began to make interactions with heaven and make interactions with heaven. Now, while that interaction was going on, signals were now sent that had to require physical movement. When I say physical movement, understand what I mean in, in the angelic realm now. What Daniel was requesting for needed a physical, <laughs> not physical to your eyes. I'm talking of the realm of angels now. So when I say physical, you know what I mean by that. Needed a, 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 a movement of angelic being into the region to minister to Daniel, okay? Now, so this prince of Pesha was there. He didn't know about this intelligence. He didn't know what was going on. Suddenly, an angel shows up from heaven. Now, now angels follow protocols. Somehow, I'm beginning to teach about angels. <laughs> it's good. And we're still talking about the knowledge of God. Angels follow protocols. They don't, they don't just behave anyhow. They follow their ranks. So this angel carrying the message of Daniel got to the prince of Pesha. He needed to pass through that gate. Yes. So he got there and the prince of Pesha more like, what are you carrying? And this angel would not release because I'm coming from, you know, can't you see my badge? I'm coming from headquarters itself, not just one. I'm not coming from another region. I'm coming from headquarters. I have a message for someone. Headquarters. Now, normally, anybody, you see, this, the things we see on earth give us a perspective of how heaven operates. Yes, it does. So, I have a message from headquarters for somebody. Uh -uh. Now, the prince of Pesha was actually scared that his authority will be undermined. That's why he resisted that angel. You remember when Uzziah was killed. He was the one David gave the letter to give to Joab, their captain. So he was carrying a letter he didn't know contained his own death sentence. He didn't know. And he went gladly and submitted it to Joab. Now imagine if by chance, for whatever reason, Uriah had opened that letter and read the content before going to deliver it. Imagine what the outcome would have been like. There would have been some measure of rebellion. You don't think he will finish reading the letter. Ah, let it not be like, I saw it too. Joab, Joab, Uncle Joab or, or Captain Joab. Uh, the, the king said I should give you this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I finish reading. Joab finished reading. I said, okay, um, Uriah, uh, tomorrow's battle, we're going to change formation. You and this person will be, and then he will now say, oh, on your honor. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? 
either that later would have gotten missing on the way and he would have come to Joab and said, Joab, we're in trouble. What was the trouble? Bandits attacked me on the way. He would have come up with, you know what I'm talking about. So this prince of Pesha was scared that this information this angel was carrying would harm him. So that's why he detained that angel. Now he detained that angel until, guess who was sent to come and free that angel? Michael. Why was Michael sent? Was it just because he was a strong angel? No, because he was the prince of Israel. And that means he was a prince of Daniel. So Michael had to come and intervene and say, my friend, let this guy go. He has a message. And, but, but he didn't explain to me. He doesn't need to explain to you the message. Let him go. And then they had that little scuffle. And then he left. Now, immediately that angel passed through. Remember what the angel said to Daniel. I am going back to that same place. And we're going to deal with this place of Pesha. And so when we are done with him, another prince will come, the prince of Grisha. Now, what's, what's mean, what does that mean? Now, the prince of Pesha did wrong. What wrong did he do? Number one, he was defending his territory. Number two, he should have had sense, but I told you because he was operating in fear. It's easy when they tell you, oh, look, your reign is over. Another reign is coming to take over you. Oh, okay, so you prepare. But when you feel that something is happening that you are not aware of, you don't want a shocker. That was a simple problem that was happening in that office. <laughs> My time is up. I hope you have been blessed by this. Let's see how the Lord's going to help us tomorrow. God bless you. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow.